What's going on, everybody? It's time for the way too early predictions as we're headed into college football season. We've got AJ Black on the mic. He's going to talk to us about some of our top teams, some of our in-between teams, and some of the ones that we just say maybe next time, you know, might piss off a couple fans. But will we do anything otherwise during the summertime? Of course not. You are Locked On ACC, your daily podcast on the Atlantic Coast Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to today's edition of Locked On ACC. Thank you for making me your host, Candace Cooper, the first listen each and every day. We are in summer mode, which means we have three episodes a week. Still quality content, though. We've got Locked On Boston College host AJ Black joining the building. Joining us, he's in the building to talk about some of our top teams, some of our low-tier teams in the ACC when it comes to football. AJ, how we feeling? Hey, I'm doing great, Candace. We're getting closer to the summer. Things are doing, uh, things are heating up here in Massachusetts, and I'm I'm feeling good about talking about a little football with our, our listeners today. No doubt about it. There's been a lot of good stuff going on for Boston College. Want to shout out the women's lacrosse team for just oh. a second. You know, Miss Charlotte North doing her thing. Came up short with North Carolina, but still, what a career. Yeah, we've got to build it. We have the Doug Flutie statue up there at, at, at Chestnut Hill. We need our Charlotte North statue because, I mean, given the what she did, I mean, like, she's arguably easily the best athlete Boston College has ever had. A hundred percent insane. And, you know, a lot of going, lots going on in the Boston College news, but getting a new AD. How has that been for, you know, all the murmurs going on? Chestnut Hill. <laughs> uh, let me just say, uh, negative radio and negative podcasts, where you have a little bit of a gripe, get a lot more listeners. So, um, yeah, talking about a guy that got ran, ran run out of Miami, um, and ha- no one can understand why he was hired. Mm-hmm. Um, really drives a lot of listenership. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. So make sure you guys check out. Those episodes, and shout out to our Miami fans who are following the show and make sure they let us know their thoughts and sentiments towards the new hire and how it's like pretty much like good luck. You guys are going to be struggling just a bit there in Chestnut Hill. But say all that to say, you won't be struggling in the, on the football field, hopefully. But we'll start with the bottom tier of our rankings. And let's start with a team that we just feel like it might not be your season. Maybe we'll try again in 2023, 2024. So I got to kind of finesse this a little, Candace. I put this by Atlantic. Okay. So do you have a preference? Where would you like to start with the Atlantic? You know, or- let's start with the Coastal because I feel like that's a little more, everyone knows it's going to be up in the air and Atlantic could get a little spicier. I like to save it so people can keep on listening. I bet everyone can guess who I have my bottom of my Atlantic. I mean, at the <laughs> bottom of the Coastal. Georgia Tech? No, I'm just kidding. No, nope, not Georgia Tech. <laughs> the Duke Blue Devils. <laughs> you know, I really just, I mean, Everyone knows I have a soft spot for Duke football. Don't care tear much for Duke basketball, men's Duke basketball, that is. I really do like Carol Lawson, the women's program. But I think Coach Elko, just from what you – I don't know if anyone takes the time. I do follow Duke football. I go to their games. If you look mm-hmm. at their social media presence, like he's definitely taking up a notch where he understands things that are a little bit different than the way Coach Cutcliffe did. Like you have to be involved. You have to get people coming to – spring game you have to like make sure people are invested in really trying to you know be a part of the program and not just be about basketball so I would say I give him a seven out of ten already for just trying to make sure the culture changes yeah and and this is not I'm not poo-pooing the future Duke I love their (laughs) hire I think Mike Elko is a fantastic hire for them I just think that he's got to build up a little bit and he's got, it's yeah. going to take a little bit of time. Um, so just for this year, they're the mm-hmm. bottom of this conference, uh, their, their division. I do think though, he's going to be an intriguing hire and might do some things, especially in the defensive end. And I think that could be something Duke could build a uh, personality around yeah. is, is you got a guy that is, you know, was it Notre Dame, Texas A&M, and all he did was defense, defense, defense. Duke has never, you know, they had their time with Daniel Jones, but they really have never been an offensive juggernaut. Why not make themselves just a gritty, hard to beat team that's a hard out for every team in the coastal? Yeah, I agree. And I think that, you know, ultimately they do get guys to the league. It definitely can be a strong pipeline. If you think if you get uh, Mr. Riley trying to do well from a quarterback standpoint, it could turn out to be a really strong program. So I agree. The future is bright, just maybe not this year. All right. Who we got next? All right. Next for me is Georgia Tech. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, losing Jameer Gibbs was brutal. Yeah. Um, 
and no, no, no disrespect to him. I mean, when you get the opportunity to go to an offense like Alabama, and I'm sure he probably got a nice, sweet NIL deal out of it too. Right. You, you go and do that, right? I just think Georgia Tech. I don't believe in Jeff Collins. I don't think he, I, if any coach in this conference, he's one that I have like with a big check mark next to his name in terms of being on the hot seat next year. Mm-hmm. Like I just don't see it happening and I don't see the results coming in and they, you know, they've hit some guys on the transfer portal, but is that going to be enough? Yeah. You know, Jeff Sims yeah. is a nice quarterback, but given the talent everywhere else in this conference, is he enough? Yeah. I, I just don't see it with Georgia Tech. You know, I definitely think they have questions in on offensive line and their secondary is going to need, I think they had, you know, that one guy who went to the Giants can't recall his name at the moment, but you know, they're definitely going to need help in the secondary. I think Coach Collins, like, I hate it because I'm like big on humans. And so just listening to him during the ACC kickoff, I'm like, hell yeah, run through a wall. Like he gives those vibes, but I don't know why it's not you know, matriculating onto the field, but yeah, he's definitely on the seat is definitely warm. It's, it's, it's a, it's a talent piece with him. I think, yeah. I don't, I, you know, you had Gibbs and, but that I almost want to say that was almost coaching. I mean, you have a, a, a talent like Gibbs. I mean, Jameer Gibbs was, is awesome. I got to see him yeah. firsthand against BC guy almost won the game basically on his own against yeah. Boston. And I felt like Georgia Tech didn't utilize him enough. Like you get the guy like that. Like when BC had AJ Dillon, you get him the ball as much as you can. When especially when you don't have a ton of talent around him. And I don't think Georgia Tech did a great job with that last year. So I think part of it's co- coaching. Part of it is they're just not a very deep roster. Yeah, I think if you can't keep Jameer Gibbs, and you know, obviously from watching the season, there were at times that he would leave the field, and he was like over it. You know, certain moments. I think it was when they were playing Georgia, he like left the field at halftime. So, yep. You know, if you can't really get people to stay, it's to me always a reflection from top down. So, you know, hopefully they find their next because again, I think he did. I think he did a pretty good job of building up it being cool to play in Atlanta. Just you might need the right coach to really bring those wins could be the right. next thing. Cool. Yep. All right, who we got next? Virginia Tech. <laughs> Now, this okay. was a tough one between Virginia Tech and the, the team is coming after this. Yes. Um, I'm not sure where I feel about Brent Pry, the new coach. I oh, just know, okay. I just know they they need to have more. They're just just like what I said with Duke, they're kind of like they lost a ton of players to the the transfer portal. Yeah. Um, you know, they don't have an established quarterback that I feel like matches well up well with the the breadth of, you know, many good quarterbacks in this conference. I just think it's going to be a bad year. And I'm not, and again, I'm not selling on their co- their coach. I'm not saying it's not going to be the right answer. I just don't think you're going to get that here. I think it's just going to be a uh, up and down season. And it'll be interesting to see if he can kind of establish that lunch pail culture that Bud Foster Beamer had, you know, during the, that really prolific run that Virginia Tech had. Uh, or if he's going to go with something else. I, I really think that's kind of their bread and butter, getting a nice solid defense in there. I just don't, I'm not sure they have that yet. Mm-hmm. So I have them kind of a middling team, not middling into the point where they're going to be bad. They could still be a six and six team. I just, I just don't see them being and six and six in the coastal can win you the coastal, but <laughs> a thousand percent, you know, I also think lunch pail culture is definitely something that Virginia tech certainly should try and get back to. And of course, coach Pry and then coach price, you know, have familiarity with that. I think when they didn't hire Coach Price, I was a little bit skeptical, but maybe they just want fresh eyes, a whole new, you know, change of motion in terms of how mm-hmm. they want the program to be. But, you know, you certainly have Fuentes who ran to the ground, and as much as he had a good lip service, like it just didn't deliver and definitely had the talent. I think he wrote himself off when he didn't have Hinton Hooker be the lead starting quarterback. And so now that you kind of get through that Burmeister issue, now we can try to focus on what's to come. And he he seems like a coach that could really find Virginia Tech's culture and, and be successful there. I just I need to see it. it yeah. I've just seen Virginia Tech be so mediocre for a while under Fuente that I need to see that there's another guy out there like Beamer that can bring success to this program. And he doesn't have an easy job ahead of him. I think, you know, yeah. it's going to take some work. And I just think this will be a year that they're going to have to just kind of rebuild and and push towards 2023. Yeah, it certainly has the advantage of having to play, having guys play in that stadium because, man, oh, man, it's still tough 
to play in Lane Stadium. Well, I was just I was just saying that when they released <laughs> some of those newer games, yeah, uh, BC gets gets them early. I was like, oh, that's that's a good one to get B, you know, you, uh, Virginia Tech on the road early. And I was like, oh, they you know time TBA. And then I saw that it was Saturday at eight p.m. I'm like, oh god, <laughs> <laughs> right. It immediately just changes the whole tenor of the game. You know what I mean? Like, yes, that place is nuts <laughs> at night compared to during the day where it's kind of like really quiet. It's just like any other stadium. It just turns into a complete bedlam there. Absolutely agree. Listen, you guys can find all the latest sports development news and odds, including this year's basketball championship matchup, the NHL hockey conference finals, major league baseball, and of course, all of the fighting news and from MMA and UFC right down to boxing. Bet online is your continued source for all the sports wagering information that includes live betting, esports, and much more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet online is where the game starts. So, you know, AJ, I have to ask you, are you putting money down from them Celtics? I know we got a big game coming up here. Just uh, curious. Am I am I touching this game? No, I'm not. <laughs> um, I, I should have. I, I I have to admit, Candace, when I have two young kids, I, I when it's a team I'm not covering, I'm yeah. the worst fan in the world. Because Saturday <laughs> night, I was like, oh, great. There's a Celtics game on. And it's yeah. at home because I saw something on Twitter um one of the journalists i was i was i follow was showing td garden and they're putting out the celtic shirts i'm like oh it's a home game yeah okay so first of all it was on sunday and second of all that game was in golden state and i did put a wager down on gold on uh boss uh on the celtics on bet online because i thought in my head that they were playing at boston and i'm like why are they playing at boston in game two well yeah uh, brain going on right there. <laughs> You know, it happens to the best of us. I certainly, well, I'm, I'm not rooting for Boston per se, as I'm more so rooting for like Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. Like I want them to get one. Why not? Like it's good, fresh change, fresh legs. So I don't know. I think I think it's gonna be Boston in six personally. But that's my thoughts. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I I like the Celtics and the Boston guy. I've been yeah. not really watching a ton of it. Um, I did watch Draymond Green go crazy and. <laughs> play football basketball basically <laughs> the usual right yep, but yep. in this of uh, trying to talk about football basketball we definitely some of these teams could use a draymond just bulldozing over people and we talked about three coastal teams here but what as we keep going through the list who's the next team that you feel like is going to have a just a mediocre season oh at the unc tar heels oh damn i knew it <laughs> uh Candace, we've done the show what for a year now and, you yes know, Yes. And I learned from you <laughs> in one year to never take them, not to, to not take them seriously, but never expect what hey, you expect. And no it, team man. burned me harder last year than the Tar Heels <laughs> did. And so yeah. they lose Sam Howell. Yeah. Tell me about, I don't even know much about their new quarterback. I just know base, you know, I've seen well, the tears. Know, it's still What's a competition. That? It's still a competition. Yeah. <laughs> I He's just still, think, I, I don't know either. <laughs> I, I I I don't see them as upper. I don't see them as bottoming out. I just see them as middle, maybe seven and yeah. five. Yeah. Well, you know, in this day and age, it's like when you know you have a stud, you, you know you have a superstar. Everyone can't help themselves but talk about them. I mean, hell, Archie Miller. We have all these thought pieces of where he could think pieces about where he possibly could go. Right. So when you're a top tier quarterback, you definitely get on the main stage early and. We know that this is a conference full of quarterbacks, right? We know that you're going to have to bring your A game. And so to me, the fact that Jacoby Criswell and Drake May are in the conversation, it's just like maybe, sort of, you know, you get in the history of Drake May and attaching him to his brother Luke and all these things, Jacoby having to play behind Sam, and maybe this is time to shine. But I just I have no confidence. But I will say I do have confidence in that defense. I think Chesnick coming in is going to be a great addition. I think that – you know, Coach Bateman, while he was nice for what he could be, I don't think that he was going to take Carolina to where they want to be. And so I think now that Mac Brown has kind of let the reins go and let Chesnick kind of run the defense actually like fully full out, it's going to be a different team defensively. Now, can they just make do with offense? British Brooks and the running back, you know, and all that good stuff. And, of course, Josh Downs is an elite wide receiver, one of the best in the country. So, they have weapons. Can they put it all together? That's my prayer. <laughs> I mean, I 
I am not. I think you've made me kind of jaded toward Mac Brown. So I, <laughs> I, you know what's gonna I tried happen? My best. Right? I tried they're gonna go best. ten. And, they're gonna go ten and two now. Oh right? shit! Yeah, like that's. I mean, it's because I've given up on them. That's the only reason why we're gonna have a good season. It's, I mean, it's, it literally happened to Carolina men's basketball. I was like, okay, whatever. And then yep. we're playing for the damn final. We're playing for the national championship game. Like, so if you just don't care, Carolina delivers. But if you try and have any emotional investment, they're gonna screw it up for you. So there you go. Yep. All right, who we got next? Now, I debated between UNC and UVA here, and I put UVA okay. here just because of Brennan Armstrong. I almost want to regret it because I don't know. I get this. I see all this love for Brennan Armstrong, and I get it because he he does really well, and he he's a good quarterback, and obviously he he, he can really throw the hell out of the ball. But I didn't see anything, not even a lick of defense out of UVA last year. <laughs> They're bringing in Tony Elliott, who's an offensive minded coach who's in his first mm -hmm. role i'm a little concerned that even if T brandon armstrong can throw the ball that that defense isn't going to stop anything so i i'm almost regretting that i put uva here but i'll buy the hype i guess and I'll okay put the UNC and listen game. that's fine too i think brandon armstrong is certainly going to have a decent season i think that it'll depend on his health and you also have um what's his name mr thompson javon was it javion JV, uh, yeah, Javion Thompson. Yes, who is excellent, and he is Mr. You know, he has all the tricks up his sleeve to be an incredible athlete. Defensively, of course, there are a lot of questions, and can they help? You know, Virginia stay in game certainly. But I'm heard. I've heard a lot of positive things about Tony Elliott. You know, shout out to the homie Caroline Darney who talks so much and covers Virginia through and through. She's she says she's feeling good about him, and so she has she has a good. Uh, gauge for things like that so mm. I, I would i would put virginia over carolina but you know crazier things have happened who do we have next <laughs> all right we'll go with Pitt next okay okay and we'll get to number one in a second and i'll redeem myself to a fan base i know that hates me um <laughs> pit you know losing uh jordan addison was a big loss 100 percent. but Credit to to Narduzzi, who's put together um, a deep roster. I mean, he's got a wide receiver room that is abs as good as any co in the conference. You know, they've got kids on that in that ro in that room that can rival anyone. And now they got Keaton Slovis, who I will buy on. I think he's going to be a good fit for that program. Yeah. Um. And I I've been high on him ever since they got him. I thought it was a great fit. Um, obviously they got a new offensive coordinator, Frank Zanetti from Boston college. I think he'll be a great match with Slovis and Pitt always has a good defense. So I think they're going to, I think they're going to hang around. I don't think they're the best team in that division, but I like where they're at. And I, and Narduzzi sold me. I'm, I'm, I'm on the Pat Narduzzi train. I mean, if you go back last year and I compared him to Steve Adazio, I look like a hot takes idiot. Own that. But <laughs> I'm saying this year, I, I think they're going to be in good shape. Yeah, listen, I think that Pat Narduzzi and Pitt, their whole crew proved everybody wrong. Nobody had them by but Pitt fans to win the ACC. And I think that nobody considered the fact that Kenny Pickett was going to be this super senior that finally kind of had this breakout year. And, you know, of course, Jordan Addison being his right-hand man was did not, not help matter. So I'm definitely on the pit train agree i hate that it had to be pit but you know we'll, we'll ride it out and i think that they're defending acc champions you can't can't ever count guys who just want to do that repeat so we'll see how that one goes yep. now the number one i'm almost feel like i know but you know go ahead for the group. Right. i'm gonna go with the u I the u is back my, yeah I, I feel dirty picking this um <laughs> because it's just a safe pick yeah, and they're the they're the it team right now, and I you know are how many they? Teams, they totally are. I mean, okay. Tyler Van Dyke is getting love all over the place, and they've got that coaching staff that everyone says is one of the the newest and best in the ACC. I don't know. I I Tyler Van Dyke does impress me, and I think he is probably the best quarterback in the ACC Coastal. Mm -hmm. Ah, I I have them winning this, and. It, it, Miami fans, I know you've been you've been tough on both me and Candace on Twitter. You can you can you can back off on me at least. I don't know where Candace is on this. <laughs> you know, when it comes to Miami, I definitely think that they have all the pieces. They've always had all the pieces to be successful, but they never quite had the coach to put it together. And now that you kind of bring all of this, you know, what's it called, Brinks truck 
to Mario Cristobal and his crew, it's, it's there's no excuse now, right? Before it was okay, it really might be Manny, we'll figure it out, da da da. da. But now it's like, all right, I got I got all the things to be great. What's the reason? So shout out to you know our new host Alex Donna who is killing it on the YouTube. I, I go on his all the time, and I'm like, how do you get a thousand views in an hour? Like you're just the man. But mm -hmm. I really feel like Miami is certainly a team that has that all the pieces in place. Oh, I'm I'm convinced. <laughs> like we were, we're, we're uh, as part of Locked On, we were supposed to do like five episodes a week, and he's out there doing ones on Saturday. I'm like, what? Yeah. Man, the hustle never stops with that guy. He he gets it done. That's for sure. That's that's the mentality, I guess, in Miami right now is they're just you know eat, sleep, breathe Miami football. They're ready to get all of the naysayers away, and they can really have. I'm I don't I don't know how I feel about the chain being gone because I feel like that was definitely good energy. But you know, Mario's just coming in and saying, "Hey, new kings of the castle." Let's talk about the Atlantic here. After I remind you guys about the caramel brownie protein bars that are just. So good that you'll have to get yourself a try. You're in luck because caramel brownie bars are available at built.com right now. So you have to act fast because they are an absolute friend, a fan favorite. You can forget about dessert because these are better than that. Plus the macros are unreal. 130 calories, 17 grams of sugar, only four grams, sorry, 17 grams of protein and only four grams of sugar. I would replace a regular brownie with Built Caramel Brownie Bar in an absolute heartbeat. There are a million reasons why you should try Built Bars, but for now, let's just say that Caramel Brownie will rock your world, and that's not an understatement. With Built, Tasty is the new healthy. Go to Built.com to get your box of Caramel Brownie Bars right now using promo code LOCK15 for 15% off your order at Built.com. So we're rocking and rolling here with Locked On Boston College's AJ Black. And we got to get through this Atlantic division in about nine and a half minutes. So I'm not going to give you my hottest takes because I just feel like I can have a whole 10 minute post episode about this. But we'll love to get your thoughts, AJ. Who's at the bottom of the Atlantic? I'm going to go with the Syracuse Orange. <sighs> Damn it, babers. You know, I agree. I agree. I'm here. I'm, I've, I've received that he is not the coach and he might be out, but, you know, it still hurts. Uh, they don't have a quarterback. I am not. I'm not. Um, they have five, actually. No, I'm just yeah, they, no. yeah, they have those. And uh, I'm not sold on any of them. Right. Um, Sean Tucker is the best running back in the conference. He's yes. incredible. Um, but and they've got a decent defense. I just I don't know. I just feel like this is a year that they're going to go backwards a little bit again. And I think this will be the end of Dino Babers. He's definitely my number one on the in the ACC in terms of my hot seat list. Yeah, he. I agree. It's tough, but you know when you only have a de halfway decent offense and a mediocre defense, it's just it's about that time. And when so, and when you make your bones on the, the yeah. speed and talent of your offense, and it hasn't been that way in what four years? Exactly. And like, yeah. What are you What are you doing? <laughs> I just hope Garrett Schrader is not the starter because I think that uh, the new kid from Florida will hopefully bring a new spark because at the bare minimum he can throw the ball. So once you get that off the ground, hey, you're you're cooking with grease. So we'll just right, we'll right. just see how that rolls. <laughs> Who we got next? All right, here's my first hot take. I'm putting <laughs> Louisville down there. Ooh, okay. I yeah, yeah. in terms of the conference, I, and and this is a tough one. The 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 Atlantic could go a million different ways. Yeah. So I am not a hundred percent wedded to this. So when it happens in October, that I'm completely wrong on this. <laughs> Don't shoot me a message saying, AJ, you're an idiot. Because <laughs> I know I'm an idiot. You don't have to tell me. But I I am not a huge believer in Malik Cunningham. Okay. I know he's a really, really talented runner. And he's got some decent offensive moves. I I don't like this. I don't like Louisville's, the, the composition of that team. I just okay. don't. I mean, Watching them last year, I just didn't get it all that much. They could be better this year, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say they're one of my, my picks to have kind of a letdown season this year. I think Satterfield's seat is hotter than. Well, I think they're tied for hot seat in terms of Babers and Satterfield. The one thing he's got going for him right now is their recruiting is off the charts for 2023. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if Papa John is paying for recruits, <laughs> but they their recruiting class for 2023 is insane 
Yeah, the NIL deals are looking better and better. Get pizza for life. No, you never know <laughs> who we got next. All right, I'm going to go with Florida State next. Drizzy okay. Drake, I hear you out there. But, um, again, a team that I'm I'm not selling on them yet. I, th- okay. I think the Seminole fan base need to give Norvell another year. And that, that quarterback. I don't think Jordan Travis is it. I think they're going to be a decent team. I'm not going to say they're going to be bad. I'm just saying in terms of a conference uh, division that I'm not putting them near the top. I just cannot do it. Um, And I think they're building something there at Florida state though. I think they're just like a year away from being scary. Okay. And then uh, I personally feel like they're going to be at the bottom. And I think what I'm going to have to do is a full ranking of the entire, both Atlantic and coastal together. And I make sure I hurt some of those feelings, but you know, of course I'm hating, but whatever. Yep. <laughs> I'm fine with that. <laughs> we got yeah. next. All right. BC. Okay. Um, a BC fan that's listening to this is going, well, AJ, you think that they're going to win the conference? Well, uh, they're, they're not. Um, <laughs> um They could, they could, not likely, but they could. So the thing that I keep getting is this team is going to go as far as Phil Dracovic goes. Mm -hmm. However, they have four new starting offensive linemen and one that's returning, Christian Hawking, who's incredible. He's going to probably be the second guard in the country in -hmm. terms of, uh, you know, in in the draft next year. Said, if you have four new offensive linemen, that is scary. And yeah. Phil Dracovic's health is scary. <laughs> so 100%. I am a really worried because if he goes down, this team is very exposed. Yeah. They don't have, I mean, Emmett Moorhead is good, but he's going to take some time to develop. Look like a deer in headlights as a true freshman playing last year. They don't have anyone else. <laughs> I can see the so, headlines now about Zay Flowers and like his decision to stay. And like, if Phil does get hurt, all of those things that would. Oh, if Phil that. Hurt, gets hurt, Zay should sit out the rest of the year. <laughs> yeah. And I, I'll be the say that like save your draft stock. Cause you know that Phil's going to give him the ball, but yeah. I, I, I do think the offensive line will be okay. The, there's, there's question marks on both sides of the ball. Defensive line. I still am not sold on. Mm-hmm. Um, they are a they're my dark horse team obviously as a uh, reporter I, I like to see where they could go and there's the potential that phil jakovic i was looking speaking of bet online you could put you know 20 spot on there and went two grand if he wins the heisman <laughs> i'm like hmm, okay do i go there but <laughs> he, he's good obviously zay flowers is incredible it's it's all is what's the potential and we've seen bc just go seven and five six and six for so many straight years i have a hard time thinking that they're going to go beyond that but they could Mm -hmm. but i'm going to be skeptical this time i'm not going to be the honk that just says nine and three they're going to be (laughs) contending for the acc atlantic i'd rather be surprised and be hey i hear you and then uh, we have what two more to go and yeah three more three more okay okay here's another one that's going to get a bunch of booze clemson they're my number three, and I think BC is going to beat them this year. That's one Ooh, of my other things. They got a scary a defensive thing. line, but I think BC can. I think Dracovic will be able to do some things against that team. It's at home. It's a red bandana game. Mark it down. That's my first prediction of the year. I got you, Clemson. I I think that the assistants at Clemson did a lot more to make to cover up some of Dabo's deficiencies. And people give them credit for. I think Brent yeah. Venables is the best defensive coordinator in the country, and he's yeah. gone. And yeah. I'm not sold on just up, you know, you know, giving a promotion to someone else on the staff and saying, "Hey, that's going to be the same thing." They're going to have an absolutely sick defensive line next year, but everything else is a question mark. And yeah. there's too much talent at number two and one for them to be any higher for me. I think that you, when you have someone who like has built a culture like Brett Venables and Tony Elliott, or even more so Brett Venables, and you're like, hey, just repeat this and be the same guy. Like you can't, you can't recreate magic. I, I was, possible. if I was a Clemson fan, yeah, like it's great that you upgraded a guy on your roster, but for a Clemson team that to me seems kind of stale right now, like they're not like catapulting into the playoffs again, and I don't think they're gonna get in the playoffs this year. Mm-hmm. Like, I'd love to Dabo should have got new blood some way, like someone to see things from a different perspective. So not just yes, men that have been part of his program for years. And yeah. I'm sure men, 
But I'm just saying, like, as someone that is fresh blood to a program, I think would have been much more beneficial to this. I agree. All right. I'm, I feel like I know, but maybe not. Who's next? Um, the, the, the next two are kind of just hit or miss for me. And I, I, I'm actually going to audible off the list I'm looking at on my phone. I'm going to say number two is going to be Wake Forest. Oh, okay. I'm all, I had Wake Forest as my number one, but I, I, I can't – their team that – Sam Hartman's great. That offense is really good. Their mm-hmm. defense was so bad last year that I feel like they're going to get hit somewhere. I don't think mm-hmm. they're good enough to be the Atlantic winner this year. They're going to they're gonna score a bajillion points, though. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And I think that'll cover for a lot of wins. But some team, like the number one team I'm going to say, and, and maybe someone else, I don't think BC would be one as someone who covers BC. I don't think they're going to do it. But another team, maybe like Louisville or something like that, will will sneak a win against them because mm. that defense is so bad. So yeah. they're going to be my number two. I, I could see that. I think that they had a really magical year last season, and to try to have that again is going to be very unique. You to try to repeat that, and Sam Hartman definitely going to have to get out of his head in order to make that happen. But, you know, crazier things have happened. Yep. And I, I I still think the conference is going to cannibalize itself again, which is going to be bad <laughs> yeah. for the conference health. Uh, because the, my number one, I, I saw people, I forget where I read it, that someone had them as a, a college football playoff team. And I'm like, <laughs> no. What? Is, 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 is you NC haven't bought State. the hype, AJ? Come on. I like them. I, yeah. I, I, I will buy on Dave Doran and that team because I think they've got – probably the most rounded team of any team, any program in that division. That being said, are they a top four in the country when you have Ohio state, Alabama, Georgia, Texas A&M, all those other schools? You know, why not? Why not the pack? They're due for something really magical. Maybe they can have a Wake Forest type season this year where they go damn near undefeated and they have one little slip up, you know, it might be to Miami or something, but I feel like that's they can be in the conversation. I'm convinced. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's something to think about. I just and and Devin Leary to me is a. I don't buy in him as a NFL quarterback because I don't think he mm. has like the plus stuff that can bring him to the top, but he doesn't make mistakes. And at the college level, that will win you tons of games. He's not gonna like beat. He's not gonna help NC State. He's gonna win games for them, and that's that's a lot. And I, I and you have to you have to respect that. Like a guy that doesn't turn over the ball, force things, make errors, things like that. Um, you know, and, and he's got a lot of talent around him. I, I I think NC State's gonna win the ACC this year. Well, crazier things have happened. I'm not opposed to it. I've said it 103 times before. Anyone can mark it. I really do want NC State to win. So they can just have something and shut the hell up about it. You know, I just, I just want to have nice things just one time. But, you know, it's always a pleasure to have you, AJ, and get your thoughts. I've written down how it's going to go. So we can recap this at the end of the football season, see how oh, we did. Boy. We can grade ourselves, see where we landed. But I'm, I'm definitely, I am I'm definitely wrote down that Clemson-Boston College thing. So we're going to talk about that red bandana game. You can book <laughs> that there. Can you please remind these folks where they can find you, follow your work? Yeah, you can follow me on on uh, Locked On Boston College. I'm I'm doing it just like it's three days a week right now. I'm I am hitting the reset button this summer. This is this is the summer of hot AJ. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I am I am just I need a breather. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's been I, a busy couple of weeks, and um, but yeah. I you know you can you can check out some of my new articles on BC Bulletin. You probably have one that is is entitled. Is Blake James really that bad of a choice? <laughs> uh, you can yeah. check that out. And um, we'll be getting into football talk on Locked on BC, you know, hitting up soon. Looking forward to it, guys. Make sure you come back tomorrow and or excuse me, come back on Friday for Freestyle Friday with Drizzy Drake. We have a lot of good content there for Candace Cooper and AJ Black. Until next time.